Everybody in here has the capacity to make a difference. It's not just about the degree you're going to get and where you're going to end up and an athlete you're going to help. If you say, yeah, you can, what you need to do is be extra careful to follow the prescription and as the dose goes off. And there's a difference between a pain level that you cannot manage and pain that you're slowly healing. This is not you. You were fell victim. Come back. That's almost the only way you get them back. So the neuron fires and your brain perceives pain. But if I clog it up with receptors that cause the, the electronic mechanism for signaling pain, if by popping opioid receptors, it just shuts it down. Or a normal channel is calcium comes in, potassium stays closed, you get a positive charge, and then nothing is hitting the opioid receptor, and then boom, you get a neuron to fire. So they made this machine up with OxyContin to get it out to market. They did a false report on a 38-person study that was in the hospital <coughs> that said there's no chance of addiction if you take these drugs. But they didn't say that it was given in the hospital environment and when they were left they weren't given a prescription for it. They just, in the hospital after surgery, they were given to it and nobody in the 38 people got addicted. So everyone knew it was a falsehood. Everyone knew there was addiction. Doctors were seeing it happen over and over and they just dumped money and money into advertising, into television, into ads. So $26 billion with a B every year is spent to convince you and your doctor that this is a good idea. And 58% of the time, it does nothing for you. So we're in just a massive crap box with that. Not that much effort to explain that to the patient and get them aware and conscious and involved and know. It's a lot easier if you know, hey, this could be a problem if we don't nip it in the bud and monitor what's going on. They didn't need it to begin with. Then you overdid it. Now they say they absolutely need it and why are you doing this to me? And then you stop giving it to them. So then they go to the street to buy the pills which are 30, 40 bucks a pop. Heroin's five to ten dollars for a little bag. <clears throat> and that baggie will get you through a day and there's a tiny bit left for the morning because you wake up with those withdrawal symptoms. So everybody who says they're not going to be the one with the needle behind a dumpster, that that's not them, that would never happen to me, I, there's a hundred percent chance that when they don't get that prescription after they've already been hooked and it's too expensive, a three hundred and sixty dollar a day habit, they go to the five dollar bag. Every single person who's in this stage says, if I only knew what the hell was going to happen, I would have never took that first pill.